Hey guys, Matt Donald here. You know, people have said that I need to be more peppy for these intros. Like, if I'm really selling, you know, Patreon stuff, I probably should, you know, actually sell it, you know, enthusiastically. So, okay, I guess you guys are gonna get your wish. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. You're gonna get some quality stuff there, some very fun episodes. <laughs> Every month we talk about pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, and this month I don't have the slightest idea what we're going to talk about because I haven't recorded it, but don't you worry your pretty little head, it'll live up to the exact standards of quality that you expect from a podcaster like Matthew Donald and his Patreon. Oh, link is in the description for where you can sign up. Thank you for your support and have a fantabulous day! <laughs> I'm going to go drink some black coffee right now. Maybe some whiskey, too. Roar. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Roar. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast as obscene as the Eocene. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Matthew Donald, and each week I in a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by someone who is so damn obscene, I can't look enough. It's, it's Stephen <laughs> Curl. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, thank you. <laughs> That's oh, good. Always happy to be here. <laughs> That's it's good. It's always, always fun, um, and it better always be fun because I have to drive an hour and a half to get to this place, and this is the midway point between <laughs> where we live live so pretty, pretty much kind of so. i think it's closer to you a little bit but. it's a bit closer to me yeah but but i don't know i like really though uh i think it's a fun town mm-hmm. uh and i it, it helps has, that i went to college here so it has its charms yeah we actually for those who don't know we actually met at that we, college we met in college at university of northern colorado yeah, yeah. go Bears. Bears. <laughs> I, was, I had to think about it for a second. You forgot your own mascot. That I said, look, look, bears is not very, it's, a lot of them are named bears. <laughs> it's not very original. To I be fair, it, it, it was, I was, um, uh, one of my freshman year of college, I was at Hastings, Nebraska for a year, and they were the Broncos. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't NCAA, though. They were like NAIA or some sort of stupid division that no one who actually <laughs> wants to play football like and <laughs> goes to for that school. They just, want, they just play football for, football for fun there, which, you know, what, actually sounds nice. I mean, maybe I, if I was to play football, I wouldn't want to become a you know, big star in the NFL. No, I just want to play to have fun, man. Right, right. So, so you know, maybe NAIA is <laughs> fine. Go Broncos. The, Go Hastings, Nebraska Broncos. Uh, I'm currently working in a summer camp through Ames Community College, mm-hmm. and um, Ames, their mascot is the Aardvark. I mean, that's pretty cool. Which is not <laughs> typical. When I was at um, um, Sunday school back when I was younger and I was more religious, uh, my Sunday school teacher, he said his uh, high school uh, team was the Camels. Huh. That's unusual, too. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. <laughs> it's usually a, um, a horse or a bear or a cat of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Tigers. a wild cat. Yeah. Or a wild cat. Doesn't seem to be very many dogs. Like, you don't even see many wolves. Uh-uh. I interviewed for a school once that had a dragon. I mean, that's cool. Which is really epic, and they didn't give me a job. There's her. that one but- <laughs> place that's the spiders. That one college. That's creepy, but it's Oh, you've different. seen their basketball court? There's a giant spider in the middle of it. <laughs> that would distract me if I was playing <laughs> basketball on So there. that's their strategy. <laughs> <laughs> they have the home field advantage because all their teams have to play against are infer- massive arachnophobes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dinosaur-like question. If you had to pick a dinosaur to represent your school... <laughs> Which one would your team be? Un- you can't pick the Raptors because the Toronto Raptors already exist. Rats. Okay, fine. So- um, that's a really good question. Huh. I mean, it's a school. I guess Rexes could work. The Rexes it would be easy to say. Yeah. The rather. um, or just go completely uh, opposite of the piece of say. What about that? What's that one Titanosaur? The Opisthocelacodius. <laughs> <laughs> pick something really obnoxious. <laughs> um, I mean. You could have triceratops. Like the term trike is increasingly that's true. A, uh, a, sl- a slang for triceratops. Go yes. trikes. Yep. He said that once in Jurassic Park, I think. He's like, oh, I'm going to stay here with the trike. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. And also, sometimes if you just shorten the name, like people have called the, to, to differentiate the Troceraptors and Jurassic World Dominion from the other raptors, people sometimes call the Atroces. 
the atrocity. Right. Yeah. And then the pyro. Yep. Like very you know, simple. So. Similar. Um, you, you could pick something like Brachiosaurus just because you'd have the to Brax. inevitably the Brax, but then you'd inevitably have to draw a picture of a Brachiosaurus playing basketball. And that's just a very silly image. <laughs> Would it use what I like to imagine is the Brachiosaurus using its neck and cheating, or is it pl- usually rules and actually using its arms? I was imagining it using its arms, but we could have it cheat with this. Like, yeah. Because I feel like not. if it's using its neck, it's too easy. You know, it's got, <laughs> it's, it's got to like lift up and like, <laughs> how tall would the hoop have to be to make it <laughs> proportional for a practice throw? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, so the Brachiosaurus make, it like it's so high off the brachiosaurus throws it you know with it goes up and then goes high in the air and lands down and it's you know since it's basketball still just worth two points <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> that's all right the opposing team has a brachiosaurus too it's like air bud there's nothing in the rule book that says a brachiosaurus can't play basketball <laughs> <laughs> feel bad for the dryosaurus on the opposing team <laughs> he's not going to steal the ball <laughs> uh, he can guard <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> one animal we could use actually this would make a kind of a decent funny mascot is the dodo <laughs> speaking yeah, we, of which we're, certainly... we're talking about that actually we're uh, the species i mean the genus name is raphus 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 r-a-p-h-u-s mm, okay uh but yeah type there's a columbid a group of birds that also include modern doves and pigeons mm. size 3.3 feet slash one meter tall 23 to 39 pounds, 11 to 18 kilograms. So actually quite big for a bird. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, obviously not like ostrich size, but like it's bigger than a chicken for sure. Right. It's like a really, really big plump chicken yeah. creature. Diet herbivore. Time late Pleistocene to early Holocene. Mm-hmm. 1 million to 350 years ago. Yes, just 350. Historical times. Historical. Not even prehistorical anymore. Just full on historical. Mm-hmm. Location Mauritius or Mauritius might be how it's pronounced. It's a T, but I'm it could honest, be. I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce that country. It's no. named after Maurice of Nassau, the uh, Dutch prince. Oh, is so, that where it gets its name from? So okay. um, it's an African island country in the Indian Ocean, roughly a thousand miles off the coast of Madagascar. Mm-hmm. Described in 1760, pop culture appearances, oh, so many. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, uh, the Ice Age franchise, Primeval, Ark Survival Evolved, Jurassic Park Builder, Jurassic World Alive, Zudakun 2. Apparently, it's in the Harry Potter world, too. What? Uh, it's called the Deary Crawl, and since they can vanish at will, muggles think they're extinct. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, as a Hufflepuff, that would certainly fool me. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter, how the mighty have fallen. J.K. Yeah. Rowling, just shut up. Uh, <laughs> Your PR person needs to. You, it's so frustrated right now. Very frustrating. So many. She's like J.K. Rowling. I know you're famous. For the love of God, shut Stop up. Talking. Just <laughs> keep it to yourself. <laughs> Uh, but no animal is best used as a paleontological punching bag than the dodo. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's notable about the dodo? That they're gone. <laughs> Dead as a dodo is a common phrase. They're yeah. such an icon of being extinct that the Ice Age movies couldn't stop making jokes about all of them dying, which I think is very <laughs> ironic because none of the other creatures in that franchise lasted nearly as long as the dodo did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's you don't see the woolly so mammoth right. lasting to 350 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, I- I just love how they have Taekwondo dodos in that yeah, movie. Exactly. It's just so ridiculous. I just like that. Don't they just have this pit that's just there? <laughs> it's like don't fall in. If you do, you burn and die. And then later on, like three of them fall in. Like, what? Why do they have this pit? <laughs> it's just there to die in. There like, goes our last female. <laughs> yeah, <for example. laughs> I don't know what I've been told. <laughs> and in the world, they mighty cold. Speaking of sports mascots, they sort of play football. That's true. They play football. Sid powers through them to get a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> uh, have you seen the uh, the last thing in the Ice Age franchise, the Scrat Tales on Disney Plus? No. They're quite good. There's a series of little shorts, and there's dodos in it occasionally. It's about Scrat and this little baby Scrat oh, that's that adorable. he finds and adopts. Nice. And they both fight over the acorn together. And <laughs> of course, <laughs> it always goes back to the acorn. But uh, uh, it was the last thing Blue Sky made uh, before they went extinct. Uh, extinct <laughs> before. Did you see that short they released? That was like to commemorate their their lot, where the scrap finally got he, his acorn. He finally gets it and eats it, and it's anticlimactic. Like yeah, well, it's it's not it's like it's sad. There's no like thing of victory or anything. Mm-hmm. He just eats it and then just hops away, and then it slowly fades away on that acorn that's just sitting there. I mean, on one hand, I get it from Disney's perspective because 
none of their movies are really making that much money. Their flagship franchise was the Ice Age series, and it kind of crashed and burned. Just a bit. And so they also have too many other, uh, you know, animation studios within their wing. So as long as all of the Blue Sky employees were able to be relocated into other animation studios, I'm fine with it. I mean, you know, businesses do that yeah. all the time, unfortunately. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, I get it, and it's just sad. Mm. Apparently, Blue Sky is the first, was the first animation studio to uh, use ray tracing in their... Uh, anim- to use what? Ray tracing. It's a graphical thing oh, okay. for about lighting, which is why if you look at their older movies, like Ice Age 2 and Robots... They look quite good for when they came out. It's the lighting. Lighting does so much for how good something looks. Of course. So, yeah. Anyways, um, but dodos are dead. And and that's funny, right? <laughs> die, uh, dodo, die. The actual story is actually not funny. No, no, that's quite a sad story. <laughs> what do you know? It has to do with colonialism. Yay. <laughs> In Ooh. 1598, the Dutch Empire acquired the island of Mauritius, or wherever it's pronounced, and named it. <laughs> Such after the Dutch prince and stadtholder Maurice of Nassau, who I only know of as one of the AI personalities you fight with in Age of Empires Three. Ha! Oh, so that's that's who that leader is for the Dutch. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I liked yeah, Ivan yeah. the Terrible. He was obnoxious, and Queen Isabella is a bit flirty. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but like Dutch Maurice of Nassau was always a smug piece of crap. He, he was, was like, obnoxious. Particularly you played Age of Empires yeah. Three, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like. He's like, I need to build a bank or something. Give me some wood. <laughs> <laughs> Once they've acquired the island, and thank God Almighty, it was uninhabited by humans mm. uh, by the four they got there. Uh, they used it for provisioning trading vessels of the East India Company, which, if you've seen the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, you know they weren't the greatest of folks. Uh, no. Uh, in the, those movies, they performed mass executions of anyone guilty of piracy, including children, and had an armada to take over the known world, which sounds like Hollywood nonsense, but in real life, they were even worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hollywood toned them down a bit. There was actually a glimpse of some of their real horrors in the third Pirates movie, a deleted scene. If you recall, and we all do for those movies, of course, <laughs> there was a scene where Jack Sparrow was talking with Beckett aboard his ship. And there's a deleted scene that revealed some of the most, the true heinous acts of the India company, but also some backstory about Jack. Oh. Disney chicken out on this, which is sad because I think this adds so much to it. Because like Beckett said that Jack was first brand a pirate when he intercepted an East India Company ship and released its cargo, to which Jack replied, people ain't cargo, mate. Why the hell did they cut that? I don't know. How I guess, dare they? Like, I guess they just thought that Disney thought that, that like mentioning slavery like that was, but but then that makes that it's a statement so, on slavery. Yeah, I know, and also it shows why Jack is a pirate, but also a good man, right? Because <laughs> he's freed the slaves, and that's such a good line. People ain't cargo, right? That they have an excuse like, oh, we didn't have enough time to. Oh yeah, pacing out. issues, <laughs> right? <laughs> they got us. But you can still watch the scene on the DVD. It's still there on the DVD. So okay, good. So um, anyway, so they set up shop on this island. Also, I should mention that the East India Company and the East India Dutch Company are two different companies because the one in the Pirates of the Caribbean is British. Right. <laughs> this, this is so, Dutch. Two different trading companies. <laughs> but still, like you thought capitalism was bad now. Uh, <laughs> Imagine it back in colonial this times. Is, this is back when there was literally zero oversight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But so uh, they set up shop on this island, and since most of the sailors there had land at sea for months, they were usually pretty hungry, and they're sick of whatever biscuits or pickles they were eating at the time. And they're like, look at all these dodos, and look, they're not afraid of us at all, <laughs> because they are not they don't have any land predators. They'll walk up right up to you. So, bang! <laughs> yeah, that's... <sighs> you know how long it took for when humans got on that island, and how long dodos went extinct? It's way too short a few years 60 years so less than a human lifetime 60 years okay so it's, that is longer than i was guessing but. but yeah still i mean apparently the meat was very chewy and unsavory so they stopped hunting them after a while yeah i heard that they it, it was they just not it was not palatable it did not yeah taste yeah well. um uh but so they were safe from hunting then but then humans started bringing in their own animals like dogs, pigs, cats, rats, and then those plundered dodo nests and directly competed them with limited resources. Also, they started, you know, doing deforestation on the island and, you know, as European settlers do, making room for all their man buildings rather than uh, harmoniously living with nature like those Native American hippies, <laughs> which they should have done. They had it right, guys. Oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, they just it was a combination of an environmental 
destruction and then uh, animals eating their eggs. And yep. the, the dodos had no natural predators. Yes, yeah, so. so they didn't know what to do. And also they were on an island. And oftentimes when you're on an island like that, you, you have an evolutionary dead end. You evolve in ways that would kill you if you had any other competition. So mm. like uh, Neurolagus rex, which is this giant rabbit from um, this island in the Ice Age. that was so big it couldn't even hop. Wow. But it wasn't even that big. It was like three feet long, which sounds big, but there are modern domestic rabbits that get about that big. That are bigger, right. Yeah, so... That, that rabbit got outcompeted by something? Uh, just life. Oh. There was a little bit of a change. Like the air pressure went down 1%, and they were like, Ugh. I don't know if that's what happened. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but so apparently some studies say they were already on the decline by the time people got there, but that just sounds like more like deflecting the blame. It wasn't us, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> they were going extinct already by the time I got there. <laughs> but settlers were fascinated with dodos, and they took some of them, they shipped them to various places to show them off in Europe, India, Japan, other stuff. But since our time with them was so short, by the time they went extinct, many scientists even doubted they existed, claiming them to be myths. Huh. Well, given the how far away they were back then, mm-hmm. I could see that happening. And also I've heard some people say that they don't look how we think of them either. Those were exaggerations on the drawings, which I could see. That head is kind of enormous. <laughs> so Right, right. And like that beak is nothing like any pigeon beak I've seen. So with the very curved sort of thing, but maybe so, they did look like that. I don't so know. it didn't have like that knobby. It might have. I don't know. We huh. just its extinction was officially recognized in the 19th century. Apparently, it took a while for them to decide it was extinct or officially declared extinct because uh, well, they didn't have enough evidence for it, and since they almost so. Little and also apparently religious reasons, like they didn't like you can't make a creature go extinct. <laughs> oh, right, because it's against God's plan. Well, it's against God's plan. Like even though God went made the unicorns go extinct during the flood or whatever, have they already <laughs> made the aurochs extinct earlier? Yeah, uh, yeah, they did. So I don't know what hypocrites. It, no, <laughs> I don't know if they officially recognized the aurochs as extinct earlier either. Huh? They just they just stopped seeing them. Like where'd they go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know, but um. However, there have been talks about them using de-extinction technology to bring them back. And since they're recent enough, it'd be far easier to, for scientists to do it than mammoths or dinosaurs. Bring it on, I say. And plus, it was humans' fault they went extinct. If we can fix it. We can yeah. fix it, that'd be cool. And unlike mammoths, there could actually be a place for them in the wild. So, I mean, you know, if you genetically engineer a T-Rex and it gets loose, that could be a problem. If, they, if dodos get loose, oh, look, birds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said, though, if we have the capability of bringing back actual dinosaurs and we don't bring back a T-Rex, we're doing it wrong. Well, yes, of course. Because <laughs> like, some people are like, yeah. oh, just bring back the herbivores. I'm like, but if you can bring back a T-Rex, Why I know you? it'd be bad, but we got to do it. I wa- yes, I mean, <laughs> no, like, it's, it's, it's the weird double standard that all dino nerds have where we agree Jurassic Park shows why you shouldn't clone dinosaurs, but if they made Jurassic Park, we would all be first in I would, line to I go would be anywhere. first in line. We would go anywhere. <laughs> I would go to Jurassic World, get myself a big Frappuccino from that Starbucks they have there, <laughs> go get a margarita at the Margaritaville, and then watch some dinosaurs. And then ha- watch the, the Pterosaur IMAX while we're there. Yeah, yeah. It's like, while, while we're here, we'll watch a movie about dinosaurs. <laughs> Can you imagine? What if during... Actually, no, they couldn't have been because I was say like I was gonna say, what if during that attack on the main street with the pterosaurs, some people were just in there watching a movie without realizing? But then I realized, no, they were all waiting that, to be evacuated. Well, so that would be a classic. Like they're in the mo- they're watching the movie about pterosaurs, and then, and then an actual, actual pterosaur burst like, through man, the screen. Man, this 3D is amazing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, but no, you know, they could bring back dodos though. And the island of Mauritius, whatever, actually still has a million people in it right now. Oh. Um, it's its own little uh, island nation. It, it's not affiliated with anyone. Is it one island? I thought it was a bunch of islands. I think it's just one. Maybe it's an island chain. Hold on. Uh, island nation. It's African island country. It includes the main island, as well as Rodriguez, up Lega, and St. Brandon. Okay, so, so there's a few islands. I think the Dodos were only on one of them. Got it. I think the Dodos were only on Murray. Yeah, so... Anyways, let's rate the Dodo one out of 65 million. I'm going to rate it, I don't know, 10 million. Actually, I think it's cool, but I don't know. I just, I don't, actually, I don't think it's cool is the problem. I think it's notable, but it's, it's lame. Notable. I mean, the bird, the bird itself is like, okay, it's a weird, chubby bird. Yeah. But 
I mean, given his backstory and what happened. Backstory so and also just how notable it is with the idea of extinction. It's a fantastic example of what not to do. Well, and also uh, <laughs> it gave us the concept of what extinction is in the first place, particularly anthropogenic extinction. You know? True. So. It helped, I guess, yeah, if it helped us understand, yes, species can and do go extinct. You know? Yep, exactly. Especially when you muck about with, this, with the ecosystem. Yep, um, exactly. Be like Native Americans. Be one with nature. I mean, you can have your buildings and other stuff like that, but like put them with nature, not against nature. Exactly. Living <laughs> so, in harmony with nature as much as you can would have been more ideal if we had done that from the start. Yes, exactly. So, um, but yes. So I think I am gonna give it. I'll give it. A, I'll, I'll give it a thirty million. I'll yeah, just give it a solid just 30. half, basically. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. That's it for this week. If you want to get hold of the show, and contact me at matt at creator com or paleobites podcast at gmail dot com for any questions to me or any of the co hosts. You can find me on social media. You can find me at social media at Methadon Creator on Facebook and Methadon sixty four on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, wherever else. But for the show, you can find it at paleobites pod on Twitter and Pale Bites Podcast on Instagram. Where can they find you, Stephen? You can find me at S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-C-U-R-R-O dot com, Stephen dot com. Yes. That's my author's website. You can find the links to all of my published work, short stories, poems, and my novelette. Yes, of um, course. And other shenanigans that I have there. Other shenanigans, indeed. I have a book series on Amazon, Megazoic, available for print and Kindle on no dodos and this far too recent it'd be more likely for there to be dodos in my other book series tesla knots but they still wouldn't be they'd be extinct by then too but <laughs> more likely more from a time standpoint yes <laughs> uh all right well that's it for this week i say the end of every episode of paleo bites i think I there think goes I, our last female i think an i said like you know, something like that <laughs> i don't know what i've been told <laughs> and the world is mighty cold prepare for the ice age <laughs> Survival separates the dodos from the beasts. Taekwondo's dodos attack. <laughs>